Welcome back to another video on the channel. In this video, guys, I'm gonna be going through exactly how I structure my discovery calls, sales calls, strategy sessions, whatever it is that you wanna call it, I'm gonna go through exactly how I structure those calls to bring on new clients for my agency and how I literally did this exact same structure. I followed this exact same structure um, and actually signed on a client at this point. I think it was around three days ago, new client for the agency. Um, I'll put up a video on the screen just to show you the, uh, the, the invoice that I got paid. It was on Friday night, my time. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna show you exactly how I structure my meetings to sign on all of my e-commerce clients. Now, as always guys, just before we jump into the video, make sure you go ahead, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'm posting every other day on the channel. Just ridiculously valuable content completely for free. Just wanna preface this video by saying this is something that I've recently started to do. Um, and I think it's definitely something that you should split test on your end. Um, this is actually, I, I did an entire breakdown video in the Quantum Agency Facebook group right after the sales call, right after I got the invoice paid. I actually said in that, in that video as well, you know, this is something that you need to split test on your end because I feel as though it's the same concept goes for outreach, right? When you do outreach, something that works for you may not work for somebody else or something that works for me may not work for you and something that works for you may not work for me. So you gotta really just see where your strengths are. I'm really, it, at the end of the day, it comes down to see what provides you personally with the best results possible and you triple down on that. And as I say, the same concept applies for um, your strategy sessions. You need to see what works for you and what doesn't. And so something that I've recently been trying and it's been working very, very well for me is having more of a conversation. So I still follow a, you know, I still follow a broad structure, but I don't follow a specific script word for word. And this is something that I've kind of been going into and I've been coming out of over the past, Probably the majority of 2020, I've really been trying to test to see what's working and what isn't. And now, as I say, what I'm now implementing for my discovery calls is more of just like a structure and just like, okay, we'll cover this kind of aspect. Once we get that, then we'll move on to this aspect and then this, and then we'll move on to the close, right? Um, and so, as I say, I, I don't really follow a script anymore. And I think that's something that really, really helps increase at least my conversion rate on the sales call. It's just having more of a conversation. And when it comes to having a conversation, as I say, you still want structure there because if you don't have structure, you're gonna go completely, you know, even though there's no script there, you're still gonna go off script. You're gonna start going, down routes that you shouldn't be going down. There's no need for you to be going down them. Um, so you still want to have a broad structure so you can successfully take them from you know, the start of the sales call up until then paying the invoice, right? You still need some sort of a structure. You still need some sort of route that you go down. And so the way that I implement that is by having broad concepts. And look, let's dive into those broad concepts that I personally am now implementing in my sales calls that I follow. First things first, the, the initial um, kind of quote unquote phase, if you like, is kind of the logistical understanding. So that's where I'm figuring out their profit margins. I'm figuring out what they're currently doing and why do they want to move, you know, why do they they want to bring us as an agency on board. What? Why don't they just go at it themselves? All that type of stuff. Um, you know, what are the current results like? Are they are, are they currently implementing a solid? You know, in, in my case, obviously, you guys know at Bats Consulting, we run Facebook and Instagram ads for our clients, e-commerce clients. So as I say, I, you know, I want to figure out: do they have a current Facebook ad strategy in place, or are they just kind of throwing money at the wall and just seeing what works and seeing what doesn't? If they do have a Facebook strategy in place, what is it, and what results is that warranting? Because you know, definitely now more than ever, we only, only ever work with clients where we 100% know it's gonna be a home run. And so if a client comes to us and just being very open with you, you know, if a client comes to us and we can see that they've got a solid, solid Facebook ad strategy in place, like it's very solid, it's probably very similar to what we would implement and they're still not getting any good results, then yes, you know, you, the copy that we create could definitely warrant different results. But for the most part, if they've got good copy, you know, we can see that by looking at their ad library and whatnot, you know, we can see that they've got pretty good copy. Um, we can see that they're kind of the way they're structuring their ad account, the way that they're, you know, targeting and doing all that different stuff. If that looks pretty good, you know, it looks quite similar to what we would do, then we won't bring them on as a client because, you know, when we implement it, if we're not changing too much, then we're not gonna, you know, the results aren't gonna change that much. And so that's really what I try and do in the beginning of the call because sometimes, you know, you, I, you know, sometimes, not often, probably once out of like every 
15, 20 sales calls I have, but sometimes that scenario does happen and so I don't move forward with them. I can tell straight off the bat by going through that logistical understanding phase in the beginning of the sales call, that really depicts as to whether I move forward within the sales call with them or not, whether I leave. Um, because as I say, that shows that shows us whether or not we're gonna be a good fit. So that's first things first, and, and at least personally in my own sales calls, within the logistical understanding phase, I also um, encompass you know the whole thing of like, why do they want to bring us on board? You know, that type of selling as well, um, more like the emotional selling and whatnot. I know Jordan Belfort talks about like emotional and like logic selling and all that type of stuff. That kind of initial phase, kind of for me at least, as I say, I personally encompass emotional selling somewhat into that. I'm not a big advocate. I, at least for my own sales calls, I don't really do too much emotional selling. You know, I don't really ever say like, oh, so why do you want to get to, you know, 50,000 a month? How's that going to change, you know, your life? Or I don't really focus on that. I focus on more like logistical and kind of like black and white selling. You know, it's just like, look, this is what we'll do. If we move forward, this is what's gonna happen. You know what I mean? Like kind of that more just like black and white selling because again, for me personally, that's what I see works best. And so obviously you, the, for those of you in the quantum agency program, you know, the script that I give you, it doesn't encompass too much emotional selling. And, and that's simply because I don't use it because I see best results without it. Now from the logistical understanding phase, if you like, I then move into kind of once I know, and basically the main goal of that initial phase is to see if you're gonna be a good fit or not. Because at the end of the day, you never wanna bring on a client where you are not that confident. You know, if you feel as though, oh, I don't know if I could get them results, or we could, but they're probably not gonna be that great just don't bring them on board because it's just gonna it's just gonna be a more of a burden to you it's gonna be such a it's just gonna zap your energy so so much it's gonna probably demotivate you because you know you're super excited you brought on a new client yet you can't bring them results and that's you know depending obviously this is very very case by case for the most part it may not actually be you that can't bring them results it's because their business you know it's just really really tough to bring them results maybe their website doesn't convert all that type of stuff so you know so if you can see throughout the logistical understanding phase that they may be one of those clients just leave the sales call just say that you probably aren't going to be a good fit and part ways and move on to the next one because long term you guys know i always talk in you know, five year stints as opposed to five month stints or 12 month stints as opposed to 12 day stints, you know? Um, and so long term for your agency, it's going to benefit you so much more. Complete side tangent there, I apologize for that. So phase two, now that you know you're a good fit, now that you know you can actually bring the business results, the client results, now you wanna to start to transition into positioning your service. And you wanna position your service based on the values that the client holds. And so the way that you do that is by, as I say, in the logistical understanding phase, you will be able to pinpoint where clients' values lie. This is a concept that I've talked about a lot, a lot on this YouTube channel. I always use this same example, but I really want you to understand it. So if you position your service in terms of how high the ROAS it can produce, whether the client really, really values communication more so than results, then the client won't see any value in your service if you position it in terms of the ROAS it can generate, okay? Conversely, if you position your service in the way how you can, you know, you provide all clients um, six hour, you know, if they send you a message within six hours, you'll get back to them. You know, if you sell it in that way to a client who doesn't really care about communication, all they want to see is results, then again, the client won't see any value in your service. What you need to do is you need to position your service in a way that suits the client's values, given that it actually does suit those values. You don't want to be going out and just outright lie to your clients. You don't want to do that. You want to position it in a way that actually suits their values, if it does actually suit their values. And so really that is what phase two is. Um, I, that, that, you know, that's when I transition into you know, positioning my service in terms of the values. I explain why we're different from most agencies out there. I explain how we do things. I give a bird's eye level view of the structure that we implement, why we're able to consistently generate our clients unmatched results, a lot better results than really majority of other agencies out there can. And really why it's just a no brainer for them to move forward with Batson Sorting. 
that's kind of phase two. Hey, this is where we then go ahead and transition into phase three, which is basically the close. And this is a very 30,000 foot view. Um, you know, I do go slightly more granular, but from a, you know, from a very bird's eye level view, like this is basically the structure that I take each client through. Um, and as I say, after, after phase two, obviously that's when we move into phase three, and that's really the closing phase. And the way that I kick off the closing phase is by asking them if they've got any questions, any problems, any queries or anything like that about what I just explained. Because phase two is um, me explaining my service and how it you know, um, differs from other, uh, other agencies, all that type of stuff. Then from there, once I finish kind of that section, I then ask, do you, you know, does all that make sense? Do you have any questions or problems or, or, you know, stuff like that. And it's at that point that I say kind of that line, like, do you have any questions? When I say that line, that is me starting phase three and that's how I kick off kind of the quote unquote closing phase. Because then from that point, we kind of go through all the questions that they have, all the queries that they have. I answer it all, always, always, always remembering, side note, always remembering to tie back in as much as you can, if applicable, to their values. You know, so for example, if they ask you something, or they have a question, or they have a problem, or a query, whatever it is, if you can go ahead and say, you know, and, and you're speaking with a client where you know they value communication. For example, something along the lines of saying like, James, look, I know that communication you kind of put on a pedestal, um, and it's because of that X, Y, and Z. If you're with a client where they value uh, results conversely, then you can literally say something along the lines of like, James, at the end of the day, like, nothing else matters to us apart from results. Like that is literally the only thing that shows us as to whether we're successful with a client is results. And so because of that, X, Y, and Z. So you're subtly tying back in with their values, even to the questions that they're asking. This is just consistently, consistently, consistently showing them that your service is so, so valuable because their values are being met with your service. I hope that makes sense. Obviously certain questions that your clients ask or uh, potential clients ask, you know, it's just not applicable to tie it back in with their values. But as I say, if applicable, make sure you do because it's just gonna make your service look so much more valuable without you really doing too much extra. And so as I say, that's really how I kick off the closing phase. And then from there, once we've kind of gone through all of the questions, we've gone through all of the problems um, that they have, the queries that they have, whatever it is, that's when, you know, for the most part as well, at least this is something that I've noticed, it's like, you know, clients go through all of the questions that they have, and because it's like, that's the section where I'm asking if they've got questions, they usually kick off the physical closing phase by saying, you know, something along the lines of usually I get the, the, the question of, okay, so um, I mean, that all sounds really, really good. I suppose now the last thing is just like the pricing and the logistics or something like that. That's how they kick it off. And it's at that point where um, you want to then go ahead and, and state your price, state that, you know, um, if you've got a three month minimum in place, obviously you want to state that, all that type of stuff. And that's really how you go ahead and get them to close on the meeting there and then. As I say, guys, that is a super broad overview of my entire kind of discovery call, sales call, strategy session, whatever you want to call it. My basically in my entire discovery call process and my outline. And as I say, this is what I'm implementing now. It's just more of a conversation. I'm still in my mind hitting those points, those kind of quote unquote phases. Again, they're from a very, very uh, 30,000 foot view, a very, very broad view. Um, it does go slightly more granular, but from, from a bird's eye level view, I mean, they're the phases that I always hit. So I've got those in my head. You know, I just don't have it on a screen. I just don't read word by word from a script. Um, but I still try and hit those phases because that's just gonna naturally result in me progressing to the sales slowly, slowly, but surely throughout the sales call without having a script right in front of you. And it's just a lot more genuine, it's a lot more transparent. Um, and I think for me, at least, I can only ever speak from experience and for me, I just see that the client kind of opens up slightly more. They just feel more comfortable because they kind of know that you're not reading off a script. You know, the, you know, like, for example, sometimes when you're reading off of a script, People may feel that, you know, if you don't know the script that well, and this is something, if you do read off a script, if you're just starting out, then I do recommend you read off a script. That's how I got started out. And that's how you're gonna get more and more confident in your meetings. And obviously that is something that's really, really important. So if you're just starting out, for sure use a script, make sure it's a good script. But something I would say is make it sound like you're just having a conversation. Make it sound like you're just speaking freely. You know, don't make it sound like you're saying, bang, 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 bang. 
bang, bang. You know, because the, the client's just not going to like that, I can guarantee you. Well, that's a bit of insight on kind of how I'm going about structuring my discovery calls. I really like to keep you guys updated on this channel in terms of how I'm going about certain aspects. You know, if I come up with a new outreach system, I'll be letting you guys know. Um, and as I say, this is kind of a new uh, approach that, I, that I'm taking on my discovery calls now. Um, it's kind of just going more off script, but, but always keeping sure that I'm following a structure so that I naturally progress to the sale throughout the sales call and I don't go too far in different directions. I, I really just have no substance in terms of making the sale at the end of the call because really that's the reason you're on the call. So guys, I hope this gave you some good context. If it did, make sure you go ahead, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video.